Hello, everyone, and welcome to Local Chat. It is episode 127 here on Thursday, June 22nd, 2023. Joining me, Will Crosby, is Ian Gibson. Hi. Do we have a ghost on this podcast? Because I, I can't see the third person. You can't see the third person? Because I definitely was interrupted while I was pasting their link. <laughs> David is here. <laughs> No, I'm adjust the VCR mystery. tracking for the clearest picture. That's my name. That's who I am. I'm a VCR I don't know if you, tape. You guys will distinctly remember tape. me saying into the microphone, what was I doing? And that is what I was doing. I was putting David into this. <laughs> Look, his link wow. is still copied. I just had to paste it. Um, the PC file is here. David is here from the Save Dika team. P PC file. Are you saying that David likes to fuck computers? Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> no, it just says it on the screen. Um, if you had to fuck a part a of a computer, machine. what would you pick? Uh, if I had to what? Dibs on, dibs on the hole in the CD tray. <laughs> oh, that was mine. <laughs> Y'all also fit in there? No, but if you wow. try hard enough, wow. <laughs> There's no part of a Welcome. computer I would like. Actually, no. My old case had rubber <laughs> gaskets for the uh, wires to come oh, out no. from. And oh, no. those were spacious. I don't think I could have fit, but... What about an old, like, like trackball mouse? Like, you would take it out, and it would have that little cavity. <laughs> you put two trackballs together, a hold them like this. <laughs> we're off the rails, folks. What's the new oh. Twitch terms of service? I think we're way past them. <laughs> oh, I've never agreed to anything in my life before. Um, <clears throat> folks, we're here to talk wow, about... Your wife must have some problems with you saying that. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> um, okay moving on um switch etiquette i sorry i don't know how to get into this from <laughs> from uh, from angry wife to this, switch etiquette. is this nintendo switch or bedroom switch <laughs> that's verse um no this is nintendo switch um I was curious, so I, when Ian used to make fun of me because on the Xbox, I used to quit my games all the time, and he would be like, <laughs> well, what are you doing quitting your games, blah, 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 basically convinced me, like, don't worry with the Xbox Series X anyways, like, stuff that isn't quick resume will quit anyways, I've learned, so, like, that part doesn't matter. So, Switch etiquette, when I finish a Switch game, like, I'm done playing Zelda, mm -hmm. I will usually save Zelda quit mm -hmm. the game like x on the okay, game no. quit it and then yeah, turn my up. turn my switch off um well, and i only me, do that excuse me wait a minute before i start making fun of you some no, no 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 put the switch turn to sleep. the switch I don't off turn the switch off okay. I don't turn, yeah okay because it's in the okay. dock it's always in the dock i don't play handheld okay and if i do play i i rarely ever do that full power down for the and same with the steam deck gotcha. okay now okay i Is mostly full power down an option yeah. yeah, you have to hold the power button. It's great for oh. traveling because it kills any battery drain when it's in your pack. Yeah. And I will should use that more. <laughs> <laughs> you, so, just, you hold down the power button and it'll pop a menu and then power options like full now, shut down. Uh, this won't be like an annoying thing. I don't do that because I'm like, oh, it's going to break my switch if I leave it running, that sort of thing. Usually I do that because it's a pain in the ass when Karen and I are playing the same games to then exit out of the other person's game and then switch mm. to your profile. And mm. it's not that much pain in the ass that I would complain about it, but it's just common courtesy. I'm just like, okay, she's going to It's be like playing. putting the toilet seat down, you know? Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> always leave it up. I tape it up, actually. So every time. <laughs> Industrial rubber How are bands. you married? <laughs> you won't agree to anything? You won't put the toilet seat down? Honestly, like, actually, I... I <laughs> I will We're still defend within the annulment window, okay? Yeah. So <laughs> I will defend myself. I have always put the toilet seat down because we grew up with cats who like to lick out of the toilet. And so my parents instilled in me to always put the toilet seat down. And like last year, I mindlessly left it up and Karen came home was like, you left the toilet. Like what? You don't do this. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. Like, what is wrong with me? Um, so anyways, uh, I will defend that part. Um, 
Anyway, switch out again. So I then I looked it up. I was like, oh, let me just see what people are talking about. And there's people who are like, yeah, I've never exited a game since I purchased my Switch. And I was like, oh, I need to start doing that more what? now. <laughs> like, because those people, I would never do that. But those people said they haven't had issues. So I'm like, there's a little leniency yeah, it's in, fine. In, in my It's a handheld uh, console. Of, you yeah. Know, it's very resilient. Like, if I'm done, done with the game, like, I'm not probably presumably not going to open the game back up like i exit the game like why would i not do right. that and i do that too i feel like it gives me a sense of closure or like i'm done with the play session and it makes me more comfortable about it but i think it's nice to know that if i forgot to do that i didn't irreparably damage mm-hmm. my system or oh something yeah, like, yeah. That. like i don't think it's gonna uh, hurt yeah. it's like no i'm done with it i don't need to leave it open yeah exactly well, like, i'm on the same is- boat and then, like, yeah, half like, the time, and not even half the time, most of the time, I uninstall it when I'm done with it, too. So, like... <laughs> I So, mine is, if I'm playing Zelda, I know I'm going to play more of it. I save the game, I go back to the Switch menu, and then I power down the console. Which, now that I think about it, you pretty much have to do from the, power men- from the main menu, anyways, if you're playing off the TV. So, just kind of yeah. standard usage. But I do force save... So that I have that in case it does close the game while it's closed. But I do have a switch etiquette story, which is I I had this problem with Animal Crossing New Horizons because Maggie got into it while I was playing it at the same time. And so I was like, hey, when you're done, can you save the game? Can you save your game before you're before you put it down? And the reason why I said that was because I kept having to pick up the switch and it was still loaded into her game. And I was like, I don't know if she saved or not. So now I have to save her game and then back out to the home menu and then switch profiles and launch the game again. So I was like, hey, when you're done with it, can you save your game and then back out to the home menu? Just so when I pick it up, I know I don't have to save your game and I can launch it and I don't have to erase your save status. And Maggie got so mad about that, that she went out and bought a new switch. (laughs) <laughs> she was like she never plays games that was the first time she played a game in years and she was literally just like how dare you ask me to do that like clearly i'm being so, i'm being so rude and then she just bought a switch and i was like why did you buy a switch and three days later she was like yeah that was pretty petty and then she like sold it to a co-worker for like the price that she paid for it and i was like it's like what the fuck maggie i'll ask you to save the game that's it i was, <laughs> was waiting wild. for her to walk in behind you <laughs> She's always close when you complain about She's her. She's always close. An animal. She's too close. <laughs> <laughs> there. Um, okay, I'm glad to clear that up. Um, next thing here on the chit chat section are I don't even want to say this acronym in case it's something horrible. Well, uh, what is this? What does it say? It says, oh, I don't know if it's BPS or BPs or it's. It's BPS because I have finally seen blue people swimming the movie. Oh, uh, <laughs> um, oh the so Avatar I- movie. <laughs> <laughs> blue people swimming. <laughs> I love the best thing about this doc Holy is that I shit. don't want to give things away, but I have to put it in here in a way that it reminds me what I want to talk about. What sucks um, is I use that acronym literally all the time at work, so I was super just like, I don't know what you mean because it's not that. Press per second. <laughs> Bits per yeah, second just, is what I use it for, but <laughs> you know what? We're all we're all nerds. I just thought it was worth calling out. So I I had not seen the new Avatar movie because I was waiting for. I, I did a little bit of research when it was in theaters, and I don't know if you know this, but uh, theaters nowadays are not as good as a home TV. Like period. Like it, there are like maybe fifty theaters in the entire world that are going to give you a better projection and a better HDR brightness contrast ratio than like. Uh, a medium high range TV at home. And so once I realized that and I couldn't see Avatar in that way, plus a lot of us were playing those in 3D and I didn't want to watch it in 3D. I was like, okay, I want to give James Cameron his due. I'm going to watch this in the highest possible way that I can outside of the theater, which means I need to wait for the 4K UHD Blu-ray master. Finally came out this (laughs) week. I got it delivered. I watched the movie and you know what? It's not bad. I don't think it's as good as the first movie. It's also a little weird, but uh, from a nerd perspective, like, yeah, CGI looks really fucking good. I don't know. Have you guys seen this movie? No. 
Nope. I, the first movie, like for the time, stunt like graphically, absolutely stunning, and like yeah. the, being the first like mainstream 3D movie too was just like those in combination was wild, but like the story was not good. I I don't know because it I, wasn't like I would it wasn't horrible. It just wasn't good. I would have I would have agreed with you. Except that I rewatched it recently, like a couple months ago, and it holds up a lot better than you think. And I think that's largely because of all the fucking Marvel DC movies crowding that big budget blockbuster action movie space. They have brought the quality bar so fucking low that you go back to Avatar and you go, oh, my God, it's competent fucking storytelling with like decent characters. And you're like, holy shit, this is amazing. So you just don't watch good movies. No, I do. <laughs> but I also I also culture shame myself into feeling like I have to watch Marvel oh, and DC movies. So it's one of those things where it's like, holy shit, big budget action blockbuster movies actually yeah. can be good. And I forgot that because of all the Marvel trash we're fed all the time. Well, I would, um, yeah, I wouldn't call the big budget Avatar movie good. Just graphically incredible. Like it's I would say even if you haven't, if you haven't watched it recently, ten years later or whatever. It's, um, it's worth the rewatch. When was honestly. the first Avatar released? Was it two thousand nine? Yeah, it was like it was like oh eight oh nine. Yeah, yeah, it still holds up though. It really does. No, well, and I know it holds up graphically, which is like incredible Even for a three D movie. Yeah, story wise, it does. Yeah. So um, I watched the second one. The second one's pretty good, but it's it's very similar to the first one, and it's not that great of a sequel. But it was still like a like hell yeah cultural touchstone like. Let's pump the graphics out like it was it was enjoyable to watch. Will you have zero fucking interest in blue people? Is that right? It's true. Some make. Uh, no, I'm, that's not worth the jokes. Um, no, I have no interest in the Navi um, or their You've never true, seen the true, first one um, or any of that or the tail fucking. I have seen the first one. I saw it in like 2016 oh. on an iPhone, I think. Um, <laughs> so you can you can imagine how much I loved it. Uh, and I've had no interest since, you know, it sounds like bad sci-fi. So, uh, you know, it's not, it's, it's just like good fanfic sci-fi. If that makes sense. Yeah, that's that, that makes sense. I did, did yeah. however, I really... Oh, go ahead. Will. I was just gonna say, I did, however, order two bangers, bangers, uh, for the weekend bangers Born? and mash movies. Uh, one of them being the incomparable RoboCop. Um, Karen hasn't seen it and I was like I couldn't remember I was in bed and I couldn't remember if my Plex server which thinking on it now I could have checked Plex in bed had it on there in like Blu-ray so it was like 10 bucks on Amazon there was some deal uh, and I was like you know I'll get the Blu-ray of this Um, because I don't think there was a 4k version of it and then uh, and then while I was there I was like one of my favorite movies of all time is Commando uh, Ian and I watched it together on one of our many dates. Uh, it is great. such an incredible <laughs> movie. Um, and also an incredible movie is uh, Running Man, The Running Man with Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> and it's fantastic. So I also ordered that on Blu-ray. Um, also a big fan of Total Recall. Are you, buying, movies. are you buying 4K Blu-rays or 1080p Blu-rays? So um, the Robocop didn't have a 4K as far as I could tell. Uh, and That's the fair. Running Man, there was a 4K version of it, but it just said that in name, not in the picture. So I was, I oh, yeah, <laughs> also yeah, didn't yeah. look it up, and it was Plus also dust, like yeah. eight bucks. And I was like, ah, I'll just get the Blu-ray of it, yeah. Because I'd rather rip a Blu-ray than than pirate a shitty 4K like version yeah, of it. Yeah, that's fair. Like I'll just yeah. rip the Blu-rays; yeah. so it'll look better anyways. Um, so just while we're talking about plex the problem i have nowadays is that if i go to legally acquire a digital copy of a movie in 4k people nowadays are providing it like 4k dolby atmos dolby vision hdr 10 bit 7.1 and i can't tell what is actually going to be supported by plex or even if i have to throw it on a usb and shove it in there so the problem i have with legally acquiring digital copies of 4k movies nowadays is that it's almost like they're over providing and i can't Mm. tell if i download this am i actually going to be able to fucking play it anywhere and it's kind of a weird problem to have yeah, no, that makes um, sense. Plex is usually pretty good with everything. The only thing I came across is 
you have to pay for the Plex Pass to do HDR on, I saw that, yeah. a, on TVs that don't support HDR, I believe is what it... Like, if it, your TV supports HDR, it will oh. do it, but it won't alter it back to SDR if you're on a TV that doesn't have HDR. It'll just look gotcha. gray and washed out. Mm. Um, and I... That's weird, but... Okay. I wish... The Plex Pass, it's just like... I'm so close to wanting to buy it and, like, paying for it because um, it, it's a subscription now. But I know as soon as I'll do that, there'll be some alternative finally that comes out where it's like, you don't need it's to use. Um, and now yeah. I'm like s- sort of get, getting more into networking and server stuff. So I'm like, oh, what if I just start running my own stuff and doing all this things and crap? And I'm like, yeah, because I used to before I got into Plex, I was just throwing everything onto a USB drive, plugging that into my Xbox One X and just running it off that because that console can play a fuckload of files just straight off a thumb drive and be okay so maybe that's the better way to go for you even even network it'll if you set it up with a network drive it can pull the yeah. file off a network drive and run yeah. it and, and the other thing is people got so obsessed with resolution that they forgot they ignored bitrate and that's yeah. why like I'll, I'll settle for a 1080p cut or something with like high like high bit yeah. rate because it'll yeah. look fine like you don't like yiffy no rips? issue yeah <laughs> i love them. <laughs> i love my rips. spider-man rips <laughs> with the predator in it and, oh uh, i did see spider-man on monday game oh shows. how was that movie's good movie's real good movie's real yeah. real real to, good I, don't, I haven't decided if, well i want to go to theaters to see the new indiana jones um You'll see that piece of crap, but not Spider-Man. Yeah, know, right? What the fuck, man? I'm so, ex- I'm so excited. It has to be better than Crystal Skull. It has to be. Does it? It looks, it looks about the same, buddy. It looks about the fucking Crystal same. Crystal Skull is so bad. Um, this one looks I'm ready the to same. love him again. Um, Harrison Ford's like a decade older <laughs> since Crystal Skull. Get off yeah. my plane. I didn't kill my wife. You, you want to hear more of my great Harrison Ford impression? No. Oh, I no. thought that was an uh, O.J. Simpson impression, that second one. Oh, if the, fl- the gloves <laughs> don't fit you, we shouldn't have quit. <laughs> uh, Game Awards Orchestra Sunday. Oh, yeah. Uh, I just want, like, I'm going to that on Sunday. I'm super hyped for it. Yeah. Is Jeff Keighley going to be there? Do you, they keep, like, announcing more people that are going to be there. It, it went from, like, oh, this is a thing that I just need to be outside more, so I bought a ticket, to, like, now I'm like, oh, I'm actually, like, excited. Like, they have oh, it, they have the vocalist who does all the, like, Supergiant Games music vocals is going to be there singing some of the v- Supergiant Games music. They have... I don't know why the actor who plays the protagonist in Star Wars Jedi Survivor... Uh, is gonna be there. Oh, I don't... Harrison Ford, Cal Kestis. Exactly, Cal Kestis. That the guy who plays him, Mark whose Hamill. name is escaping me. Alan, um, Carrie Fisher, and like a few other people have been announced too. And I'm just like, huh. It's like a stack list for what was a not a super duper expensive ticket. Like it wasn't hundreds of dollars or anything. And I'm in like the front section too. So thousands. I'm kind of shocked. No, it was like a hundred. This... <laughs> is this at the Hollywood Bowl? Yes. Is the Hollywood Bowl as cool a venue as it seems? I have never been there. This will be my first time. Ooh, I'm excited. I'm ex- so it I'll report like cool back venue. on a local chat sometime after this Sunday. But like, I recently watched a Columbo episode that took place at the Hollywood Bowl. Eh, oh, Great. One more thing. It that looks was cool. And the flower, flower on your lapel. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is that what the one with the pool and the. Uh... I don't know. I think the pool's a different yes. one. It is the pool? No, pulls pulls the football one. Pulls the football one. Pulls the football one. God. Karen, it's Sorry, time for Columbo. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't watched an episode in months. I need to. I just, got, I just finished... Full segue. I just finished uh, season two of Battlestar Galactica, which ends on a cliffhanger, which I like to call the start of the Iraq War arc. And I'm so <laughs> oh, fucking God. excited. So fucking excited. God, How would you clip that, please? Oh, Anyways. <laughs> I know oh, you will, I did, please. Sorry. I know we have games to get to, but um, I did watch Paddington, uh, which oh, I thoroughly nice. enjoyed. It's a good movie. Good movie. I, 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 um, I have two on the docket uh, for this weekend as well. It was Robocop, Running Man, or Paddington 2. <laughs> you know, 
three incredible action thrillers. Um, so we'll hit. Those. I mean, Paddington uh, Two is probably the best out of those movies. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll I, see. I have. I have a problem, which is I have two movies that Maggie and I are planning to watch, but they're both horribly depressing. One more than the other. So one is Saving Private Ryan, which oh, is yeah. a bit of a that's that's a that's a big meal. And it's the other one bummer, is yeah. the other one is Come and like See. Them. Have you seen? How do you guys know about that movie? It's a Soviet World War II movie from the seventies or eighties, and it's just really fucking depressing and i i've seen it before but i think i got the 4k blu-ray of it recently and i'm like i need to rewatch it but i also know it's a heavy fucking meal and it, i'm just like i've got movies to watch but i don't want to be depressed and so we just keep putting it off oh you know what you need to do a triple feature and i can give you a good palate cleanser to put right in the middle of them uh grave of the fireflies Uh-oh. just toss that right in the middle <laughs> <laughs> schindler's list throw it right in there <laughs> oh boy um, oh my what else? god uh, anyways we had to you had to get back to world war ii didn't you um yeah. with both of the movies that we just said <laughs> do our world war ii <laughs> um okay uh the final thing on here i have this tweet i thought it'd be fun to discuss this is going around on Twitter, I don't know if you've ever used Twitter. It is a website where people can post. Never. Uh, this is from Caroline Petit. Um, I have no idea anything about this person. Oh, at Kotaku. Uh, they wrote, critics, please have some conviction. Stop appealing to BS notions of objectivity. Stop saying some of my favorite games are sevens and give those games the nines and tens. Argue for their greatness in, the, in your review and give the nines that leave you cold leave you cold the scores you think they deserve hmm. um basically um, what i got from this tweet is be more subjective in your reviews and add like the love and the enjoyment you get out of a game to your review um and i just thought this perfectly encapsulated the way a robot looks at a movie like ian and how everyone else in the world looks at movies like me and everyone else um, well, I know what maybe sparked this was like, oh, what was the game that just came out? It, maybe it might have been a Final Fantasy 16 review, something relatively recent. Oh, from, there was like from Gita. No, 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 no. Uh, it was a reviewer who was like, this game's like a eight out of 10 or something. But like, to me, it's a 10. Yeah. And I've heard I've oh. heard that like a few times from other people, too. And then it's like, it well, then give it a ten. Like, yeah, objectivity doesn't exist in. I think the arguing art, <laughs> it's right. not real. So the argument comes down to, and and I was just making fun of you, Ian, but you oh, you are the first to say like, oh, objectively this, subjectively like that, and sort of stuff when we talk about games. And I think it just comes down to the point like, if you're there's reviewers I go to to learn about a game like objectively like how's the gameplay or like Ian's really good when I want to know about gameplay of a game and stuff like that, or if I'll like it. And then there's other reviewers who write about like the love side of a game. Like, Oh, I love this aspect of it. And this little thing makes you feel good. And so like, they're definitely separate. So I don't fully agree that like make everything a 10 because you love it so much, but I also don't Mm -hmm. wholly agree sitting there and going because it had a thousand characters. It is a 4.25 on this scale. So well, I think yes. that was interesting. I think most of the mainstream reviews are more on the like subjective side of things. To be honest, like your IGN, Kotaku, Gamespot, whoever, like a lot of them, and even in a bunch of their reviews, they they have emotion stuff in their reviews, and then they're like, "I love this game so much, it's incredible." Blah blah blah. Seven out of ten. And I'm like, "What you doing, dog?" <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Whereas well, yeah, if, yeah. if I'm looking at like a digital foundry or something, who are you know, an, a, an outlet who focus on performance, like that's their focus is like how a game performs, how it is at a technical level. And like if they did like ratings and rated a game low, it's like, OK, well, they're looking at specifically at a technical thing, not at. Yeah, yeah. not at the artistic side of it necessarily. And there's and so some I, crossover between art and tech, but like, you know, you know, what I mean? yeah, yeah. So I, I would say like my my approach to reviewing and what I think all reviewers should should be held to a standard of is. It is not possible for humans to judge something objectively. 
but you should still strive to be objective. And by that, I mean, you should not have subjective parts of your review. You can use that as a as a starting point for your review. So I love this game. That's not a good review. That's very subjective. But if you use that as a starting point, you say, hey, why do I love this game? Well, I love it because it does this, which is revolutionary within the genre. OK, then you're starting to get towards objectivity. Or I love it because the graphics really mesh well with the story. You know, they make me feel very scared. And this is a horror game and that works well. OK, you're moving towards ob objectivity. Horror games should make you scared. You know, that's an objective take. And so I this tweet is it's interesting because, you know, one of the games we're going to talk about later in the games played section is is a game I'm having a lot of fun with. And if I follow this tweet, then I would be like, fucking 10 out of 10. This game's amazing. But stepping back a little bit, I go, OK, why am I having fun with this? What are the flaws of this game? And objectively, I give it more of a six out of 10, seven out of 10, for example. So so for me, I, I do agree with the sentiment of there is a problem with reviewers tending to feel like they before they even play a game, it fits within a category. Is this a seven? Is this an eight? Is this a nine? If it's a triple A, it's got to be a nine or a 10, right? Because the marketing budget's there. Unless something's gone horribly wrong, a la Redfall, it's going to be somewhere between an eight and a 10. We need to get away from that mentality. But at the same time, I don't like reviews that are purely objective. I love this game. I had so much fun, 10 out of 10. No, you got to give me some effort towards objectivity in your review. Mm -hmm. I don't disagree entirely with that. I think there are a lot of things that we include as part of a review that are inherently subjective and can't be escaped. Um, yeah. Whether you enjoy a story or not is entirely subjective. You can try and apply some objectivity to it, but realistically, your life experiences, your tastes, the way you're raised, so many different things go into how you interpret a story that it is impossible to objectively rate a story uh yeah. similar feelings about like art and art styles i've you know I'm, I'm sure we've all seen reviews where reviewers are like oh this is really cool but like the art style i just do not enjoy one of my favorite games is psychonauts there are a lot of people who look at that art style and they're like i want to vomit that's ugly shit and i'm like <laughs> do i agree with that no but that's also like a you thing and totally subjective but that's part of a review and not something that you can actually separate. You can put a note in your review of like, hey, this art style is really cool to me and I enjoy it, but you might want to take a look <laughs> at it before you go purchase <laughs> yeah. the game because uh, it's yeah. a little different. Uh, so I think more stuff like that in a review, granted, people aren't going to read most of the actual text in a review to find that information, but like, I think that plays in a ton, uh, if I'm being frank. Yeah. yeah. Cool. I, it's a nice little discussion. That was uh, better than I could have ever hoped for. Um, moving on, if, folks, we're officially done with the chit chat section. So wake up and smell the video games. Let's start off with the one we've all played Battle Bit Remastered 127 versus 127 souls fighting each other killing each other dying and screaming begging for mercy telling them uh asking you to write their families uh before they die um i've encountered it all folks battle bit remastered is a fantastic video game uh in the most subjective sense it has brought me back to the heyday of battlefield bad company 2 and I am enjoying it immensely. I have given it the coveted playing it when I don't need to be award. Uh, <laughs> and that's even crazy because it's also a multiplayer game. And I never yeah. do that. Um, the only other game I did that with recently was Hell Let Loose. Um, so absolutely banger. Gentlemen, let's talk about it. What you got for me? Well, we, we talked about it a little bit last week. So, so David, maybe you should kick us off since you're you're fresh here. Sure. Um, I haven't played a ton of it. Probably four ish hours. Probably somewhere thereabouts. Um, it's one of those games where. It. It does hit me in the nostalgia. I'm a, I was a huge Battlefield 2 player. 
huge but not as huge like bad company two player like i used to play in tournaments and ladders and stuff for two uh i played thousands of hours of of battlefield two um and a lot of this game does harken back to a lot of those days but it's also you know it's like three people made this game it's not hugely polished i think it has a ton of blemishes and issues and like, Hey, why isn't there shading in some of these hallways? And like, (laughs) uh, it's got problems. So I think for me, it's a game that really just makes me miss a different game more Mm -hmm. than like the game itself. It's very much just, man, I miss those days. Wish EA would just like make an old school battlefield. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah so we we played a little bit on on saturday morning the three of us and i i remember having a lot of fun with the game david hops on the chat and i'm like i'm like david how are you liking the game and you were like uh i'm not loving it i don't think it's great it's okay it's something along those lines and i was like there was kind of two two things that happened in quick succession the first one was like what like you love battlefield games why don't you love this game and then the second part of me was like Oh, no, he's right. Like, this game is not great. Like, it is 99% nostalgia hit where it is filling a niche in this FPS space, basically filling what Battlefield has not been able to fill for the last five, six, seven years. Um, And so so there's absolutely problems with this game, but it works just well enough in a niche that has been, I don't want to say abandoned. I'm going to say mismanaged by EA and DICE. Yeah. And so there there's 50,000. I believe their all time high right now is like 53,000 concurrent players on a fucking indie game that looks like a dog shit version of Battlefield because it's a better feeling fucking Battlefield than the ones they put out recently, even with, you know, it's got some weird quirks. It's got some weird issues. It's got some weird UI UX stuff. It looks like a potato game, but enough of the core gameplay is there that people are having so much fun playing it. Um, and I, I've been enjoying it, but it's one of those games, like just to go back to what we were talking about with the tweet, like I'm, I'm absolutely loving it. I'm like level 25. I've got like 11 hours in the game. I'm playing it a lot. And at the end of the day, I'm like, yeah, this is probably seven out of 10. Like, this is not an amazing, but I am having a huge amount of fun with it. Well, what's, what's, what's your experience with the game that been so far? Uh, yeah, it's been about the same. I I just really enjoyed, I haven't had a game in a while where it's just like, oh, I can hop on for like 20 minutes and play and like not yeah. worry about anything or like like half the time when I'm watching something on my computer, it's like, oh, what game am I going to pick up during this? Like and that one fits just enough because there's only talking occasionally when people die next to you. And at that point, it's pretty funny. <laughs> like it's not as demanding and hell let loose where I have to be like with my team doing stuff, but it's also fun enough that if i wanted to do that i could do that when we're streaming and stuff like that like people will take it seriously um i did have a great moment where there's one map where it's just like all underground and like there's all these like hallways and bunkers and everything like you can go on the surface too but like stuff's underground and we were like storming down these stairs and i realized i unlocked a flashlight and i was like oh let me put it on my gun and they might have patched it since then but every time you would look down the barrel, it would turn the flashlight on, even if you manually mm-hmm. turned it off. And I was just like, ah, oh, I don't want this. Like, people are going to see me. It's night and it's raining. Like, people are going to see me. And oh, the flashlights flash- are, like, the biggest target. Like, yeah. on your, yeah. <laughs> on your so face. <laughs> I switched to my pistol, and we're, like, charging down these stairs, and I jump down the stairs, land, and I land in a hallway that is just tight enough with the enemy that they can't see that I don't have a name tag over my head. So I'm just standing yeah. down the way with them and I just have my pistol and I just put two and two together and I'm like, oh, and I just start shooting them and I kill them and then my entire team rushes down and I was, <laughs> I think I was alive and got like 15 kills in those bunkers with a pistol for like nice. a good five, yeah. 10 minutes just going through there, defending it. Um, and it was absolute blast. Uh, and then the other great moment was I murdered a guy or a guy died next to me and he was like really playing it. I was like, Oh my God. He's like my leg. (laughs) And he's like, hunt, hunt, please help me. And it like starts shooting. He goes, you can't get to me, man. 
write my wife, please. <laughs> it just <laughs> goes off. And yeah. I'm just like, community's great. Uh, yeah. It's so fun. Mean, what, man, the you, time... you get that. And I got a dude who was like surrounded by three enemies. I'm like hiding in a corner. He's like, man, what? Why are you being a bitch? Come get me up. Come on, man. Why, why are you sitting there? Why, why are you being a bitch? And I'm just like, there's three people on top of you. What do you, what do you, what do you do? <laughs> you get, yeah. Well, you get that. And then you get the guys who are just like, you remember what's wrong with people who play multiplayer games who are just like, <laughs> fuck you, man. Like, you no, you're cheating and there's no way you can do that. And, yeah. Or like racial slur. And you're just like, that's where we are. <laughs> this is the, the nice balance yeah. <laughs> between those. Um, well, I, but I, I discovered that. So they have a they have a drag mechanic in the game where where instead oh, of having yeah. to like revive or heal some a friendly oh, yeah. in place, you can drag them behind cover. You can also do that with enemies. Yeah. So yeah, so can. a couple times I've had some somebody die and they piss me off a little bit and I'll just drag them and I'll be like and I'll get on the mic and I'll be like they're not coming for you you're coming with me buddy you're coming with me <laughs> while I'm dragging this dead enemy behind cover yeah it's great that's amazing. it's 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 it really is like there is nothing new or exciting about this game i I would say the only thing that kind of qualifies is the 127 versus 127 because battlefield never got there 2042 was all like we're going to 128 players in a match and this doubled it other than that it's pretty much just battlefield but the fact that it is battlefield when battlefield is no longer battlefield is more than enough to make people happy and so you're having all these crazy moments uh i'm having these moments now that are reminding me of moments i had playing battlefield 2 when that came out where i'm like oh i'm hiding behind a rock and the helicopter comes up and we're just like like, there's me and these three guys and we're stuck and it's just like it like i i forgot Playing this game again, 10 hours over the last week that it's been released, which is a lot for me. And the and and I like exited the game the other day and I looked at my desktop and I was like, why do I have Battlefield 2042 installed? And then I was like, oh, that's right. Like a month ago when it was on Game Pass, I felt like playing a Battlefield game and I installed 2042 and I played it for 20 minutes and then I never played it again. <laughs> and it's just one of those. It's like I did an accidental A-B test where I was like, I want to play Battlefield. Let me play the new one. And I dropped it after 20 minutes. And then I played this fucking indie game and I can't stop playing it for the last week. So it's just one. It's it's a lot like Tears of the Kingdom where I talked about this the first week after Tears of the Kingdom came out, where nothing against Tears of the Kingdom, but a lot of the reason why it's so successful is because it's more Breath of the Wild when the rest of the games industry has not fucking delivered that since Breath of the Wild came out. And BattleBit is very successful because it's more Battlefield when yeah. there just has yeah. not been that for a while. And that's that's crazy. It's not necessarily the game itself that's so successful. It's that it's in a vacuum that makes it so successful. My hope wake up call is probably too strong of a word, but like my hope is that EA and Dice at least realize that like with something like Battlebit coming out of nowhere and doing so well for an indie mm-hmm. game that let's be frank, kind of a piece of crap, but that's fun. Like <laughs> I I hope that that is enough for them to realize like oh we can probably go back and try this old style again and see see how it does exactly Uh, and that's really all probably the most i can help for hope for but i I think they already got a bit of that with 2042 i think the wake up call was more 2042 and now it's just like this extra piece of evidence like look people want to play battlefield you're just not delivering battlefield in battlefield yeah yeah. And, and 2042 was weird because they kept promising and they were designing in part towards that old battlefield yeah. style. They knew what they needed to do and they just couldn't fucking deliver on it. And so it's well, like, they threw in a bunch of extra stuff that kind of like effed yeah. up that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, no, just go be basic and be good. And then add on top of that and try stuff like get an audience and iterate and try things before you just toss something out like that. So, and also yeah. ran like shit and was buggy as hell so that didn't help <laughs> yeah yeah but hey it runs better now still not fun to play <laughs> bring back 1943 game was so good yeah um, two again so moving on uh i'll hit uh i'll hit some games quick uh tears of the kingdom i thought i was wrapping up um and <laughs> <laughs> then i've played like 10 more hours um and 
I have full stamina. I have 23 hearts. Um, I have t so much love left to give. Um, and I, I think I'm almost done. I think I'm like, I think I'm like a quest away. I think this time when I go to Lookout Landing and talk to Pura, I'll actually be ending the game. Um, <laughs> well, send me a Discord message. <laughs> With where oh, you're shit. at, I'll let you know. <laughs> oh, shit. oh, please. <laughs> shit. I just want it to be over. Yeah, I, I um, put the game down after the four main things because I was like, I've played a lot of this game and I don't want to burn out on it, so I'm just going to put it down for a while and then come back at some point. Cause so it sounds like long. you burned out on it. <laughs> A little bit. Yeah. I was I was so close to burning out and then I don't know how not how, but I convinced Karen to start playing it. I was like, oh, I'm winding down now. I wasn't. Uh but I was like, you can you can play. Uh, or so I thought I was. Uh, and so she started playing and like I was seeing cool stuff she was doing, and immediately she it's not the exact same stuff I ran into. I was like, oh, where was yeah. this Addison? Oh, what? I was like, she went to an area and I was like, Karen, I went to the area around hour 70 and you're here at like hour 20. Like, this is wild. Yeah. And so it gave me a second win where I was just like, oh, let's go. And I spent like 30 hours in the depths, just like going around to all the lamps and Ugh. everything, tagging shrines yeah. and then going back and doing shrines. And I wasn't I was like. I was every time I got a hint of boredom of anything, I would just pivot to the next thing and just do that, yeah. do that, do that. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, OK, so now I'm pretty good to go. Like, let's wrap this game up. Uh, so <laughs> I went to look at landing and it was just like. It was just like, oh, go do this. And so that's when I sent the message in Discord and David's like, or no, I mentioned it on local chat or something. It and I saw David, you had written a message a that stream. said. Um, cause I, I remember I hadn't had chat up and I brought it up and you said, there's a bit more to do after that. And I was like, how much longer could it be? <laughs> and so like 10 to 15 hours later, um, I yeah, well, I, I have a, a coworker who did one of the phenomena and then unintentionally got to where we you're at will. Oh, and skipped like a bunch of oh. <laughs> you're not supposed to do and he messaged me like the week it was like the first weekend after the the game was out and he messaged me he's like so not to spoil like not trying to spoil things but like do you know what this word is and i'm like no he's like oh, okay yeah i definitely did something out of order oh wow <laughs> there is so i was trying to figure out um and I still don't like I haven't made to the final like final battle, so I don't know if you can mainline it to that final final battle. But the one of the things I did, there is another gated th like you need a certain amount of hearts to get through yep. this thing. So I was like, OK, so uh -huh. there's you can't immediately go and get all this stuff without doing that. But I still don't know. I, supposedly, you can just beat the game right away. So you might not even need oh, that, that final thing. Interesting. Um, but uh, I'd be surprised if you could. Yeah, I, I will say that one quest where they were just like, you do a whole thing, and then they're like, oh yeah, let's regroup. And I went, credits, please? No, we're not doing those right now. <laughs> um, so, uh, and I will say the story has been really cool. Like, yeah. I mean, some of it's like you can guess at or is obvious, but to see the final like memories and cutscenes of it is it hits on emotional notes. It's very well done. Um, and I was just like, oh, that's, and they even like at one point, they're just like, hey, let's just spout official history of Hyrule right now. So people yeah. don't <laughs> get confused anymore. And I'm just like, what? Like, okay. Yeah, I think my only complaint about the story was like, they took the lazy route to the choose your own adventure at the beginning where yeah. kind of all four phenomena you can go do all just have the same story that repeats each time yeah. you beat the thing yeah. instead of like being cool about it and being like, well, they're all going to tell a story like in sequence and just the order you get, it might be different. They're just like, no, we're all going to all tell this exact same story. So I thought that was lame. Yeah. But other than that, I thought the story was, was like pretty yeah. good. And, and, and knowing that like those four stories were the stories in breath of the wild, but there's more in this yeah. game makes it better. Cause at the time it was just like, Oh, that's all it is. But now that you get more of that stuff, uh, it's really fun. So, uh, Tears of Kingdom, great video game. Almost done with it. Hopefully by next week. Uh, and then the final game I picked back up was Alundra 2, the fantastic video game 
for the PlayStation 1. I uh, was in the whale boss, if anyone remembers, the mechanical whale. Oh, oh yeah, uh, yeah, I do. I do. Deep yeah. in the whale. Uh, and just, I... I had to go to his lungs, and then I had to go to his stomach and fill his stomach with goopy goops, and then go We're out of the stomach. Kingdom Hearts Two, the the Pinocchio world. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, Kingdom Hearts One. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, yeah, uh, that. pretty much. <laughs> and then, um, a fucking game. Then I killed that whale, <laughs> and then the whale shot me. T- whale turned back to a human or a real whale instead of a mechanical whale. Shot me out. There's the most annoying enemy in the entire world inside the whale, and it's this little green guy who goes. And then he just teleports around the room going. And then he'll teleport right behind you and he'll go. And then he'll just punch you and you lose like 60 damage and you're just swinging oh your God. sword everywhere. and You can't hit him. The worst enemy in the entire game. And there's these little blue guys with tails that go. And they lick you and you're like, what is going on inside this whale? Um normal forum it, man it's important i hate them it's important google that um, <laughs> and then the final thing is uh i cheated uh like a cheater oh, i am there's a, disgusting. there's a bull racing uh mini game where you can Are bet these on the bulls. same bulls that lick the dudes yes the same bulls that lick the <laughs> <Okay>. dudes armpits <laughs> okay. the pirates armpits and um you can watch the bull race and then load your save and it'll be the exact same winner so Bet it big every oh, single time. Oh, nice. So I was nice. like, I have like 23,000 gold now. Uh, come to realize I really didn't need to do that. Like I can pretty much afford everything. The one thing that I wish I could abuse is there's a dart mini game. And every time I feel like I figured out the bullseye, the latency on it changes and I have to start learning it all over again. But you throw these bone darts and you only get bone darts from like chests and killing enemies. So you have a finite amount of them. So I'll just go and like, I'll make a system save and then just try to get a perfect score to get a bunch of stuff. Cause you can unlock like extra stuff for your powers and everything. And the guides are like, you don't necessarily need them, but I just, I want to see what, see what they give me. Like you, you get You'll all this just cool do a vitality state between stuff. each dart. That's see, that's, that's a lot of effort. But I could it's do not. that too. <laughs> it's, it's also like really annoying because effort. it like you there's like an outer ring and an inner ring and then the bullseye and then if you you get up to five times and then you get like chance time where it goes even slower so you then have to switch up to what the chance time lining up thing is. It's just like it sounds like you should oh abuse save goodness. states. Is what you yeah. should do. It sounds like uh, anyways, <laughs> Lundra Two still a fantastic video game. I keep taking some great screenshots. I wish I was somehow recording it from the Steam Deck, but uh, I've left it all to myself. Um, but uh, it's, it's a great video game. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, it's been a super fun time. Yeah, that is uh, Alundra 2. Uh, Ian, you want to hit your Dead Space 2008? Yes. Uh, so I've been playing the Dead Space uh, remake that came out earlier this year. Ooh, yeah. Uh, talked a little bit about it last week. Um, I feel like I, I was overly negative about it last week. So if I may, I'd like to clarify a little bit. Uh, I'm now three or four hours in. (laughs) I finished like the first three chapters. It's this game is, it's a great game. It's a great 2008 game. I think where I'm frustrated by it is that it doesn't really feel like it, it needs the remake. So, so admittedly, I never played the original. I don't know what the differences are between the original and the remake. My understanding is they didn't necessarily like drastically change the game or anything. Um, But playing the remake, it just feels like a very good looking 2008 game. And I think part of the problem is, you know, seeing some of the other remakes that are coming out, especially the Resident Evil remakes. It's like that's not good enough anymore to basically take an older game up the graphics a lot and add a little bit of quality of life spice on top of it. Uh, You know, people are expecting more from their remakes now. Um, So I am still enjoying it. I can totally see why people love that game, especially if you played it in 2008 or near 2008 when it came out. You're probably like, holy shit, this is great by 2008 standards, which it is. I'm just a little upset based on 2023 remake standards. And uh, I can't really hold that against the company because I, I mean, 
before uh, Resident, all these crazy, really good Resident Evil remakes started coming out, that was kind of the standard for a remake yeah. was just up the graphics and a little bit of quality of life, and it's available on a modern console. So if you're into Dead Space, if you're curious about Dead Space, totally pick up the 2023 remake. You won't be disappointed. Just don't get your hopes too high. I think I may be done with the game. I'm not super into it, but I've enjoyed what I've played so far. And if anybody's interested, this is definitely the way you want to play it versus going back in time. Sounds like it's closer to the remaster side of a remake than a full remake. Yeah, the graphics are incredible. And again, I can't speak to what they actually change. So it does f feel great, but there's just the game design, the encounter design, the sound design, etc. Is a it's a, a little bit too... 2008 not in a bad way just in a you you would not be fooled into thinking this is a 2023 game did you uh hit any zero g sections yeah i hit a lot i hit a lot i will say they, that they control better that is in in the original they are you you weren't in zero g you were jumping from platform to platform in the original oh okay yeah like no it feels, like it feels great in this so I, I, that fine. is one of the things i i think i'm glad they added um, cause it was yeah. super annoying. In the <laughs> no, it's fine. It, if anything, it feels a little bit underutilized hearing what you say makes sense, but doing the zero G sections, it's like, Hey, this is cool. This controls well, but it feels like I'm just floating through an empty space to get across it. And there's not really anything to do within it, but that makes sense given that they've added that whole thing yeah. compared to the original. Yeah. Um, great. I'm glad you're liking it. I need to, I need to hit that. Um, I also need to hit um you're all you're both gonna say no you don't need to play that but it's just in the back of my mind is for when it's like four dollars is the callisto protocol because i'm curious don't enough to, to i'm curious enough to <laughs> play it i'm not curious enough to pay for it to play it uh, like if it came in a game yeah, pass fair. i'd be like oh let me put a couple hours that's into fair. this see what it's okay, like that's fair that's that's more of what and then I, i've heard the the difficulty is is stupid mean so yeah. I would definitely recommend. I, that's the other thing is I so I played Dead Space. I played probably the first 30 minutes on like the, the straight medium difficulty, whatever that is. And I and I died like once or twice. And like they they love to drop enemies behind you in spaces you've already cleared, which they kind of make sense. They're popping out of the vents. But it's also like, OK, you're doing the horror thing where nothing is safe, etc. And I was like, OK, uh, I'm not super into this game. So I just dropped it all the way down to story. So I have regen health. I haven't died since. And I'm like, this is way more enjoyable because I'm just I'm not like cooking it through the game. It's not like I'm running through the game, but I'm also not like terrified of every encounter and, and like really like gnashing my teeth at every enemy fight i'm just kind of like cool enemy let me shoot him up a bit cool let's go to the next thing cool and i'm really embracing that like when i start to feel frustrated with the game i'm just going to drop the difficulty and still enjoy the game but not have the frustration with it and i okay. I, I think that's the way to go yeah that sounds great uh david you've got a lot of games on your list shall we go through them I do. I'll try not to take long. If I do, just kick me from across the country. Uh, so first one, I think y'all played this last year. Yes. And that is yes. Citizen Sleeper. I slept on this game because I didn't play <gasps> it until. So we started playing it on save data. We streamed. We're, we're going to stream like a full playthrough of it. Uh, but Zach, Pridge and myself are playing. Pridge is the only one who had played it. We played for a couple hours the first night. And then I immediately went and got like downloaded it myself and binged it for a couple of days, played through the entire thing, beat the whole game, <laughs> did a bunch of the endings. I think I missed a couple um, here and there, but like did, mm. did the vast majority of the endings. And man, what a game. What it's, an absolute game. Very and cool. by that, I mean, it's not much of a game, but like it's really good <laughs> it's it's really yeah. just like the writing is fantastic the the story is great the what really is a resource management game or like energy management at its core like works for the story and everything too uh i just absolutely fell in love with that game if i had played it last year it would have easily been my top five games of last year wow like, no no issue uh absolutely adored that game so i won't talk about it too much because i know you all talked about well, it. well i just want to say um because you mentioned i had never really thought about it but you mentioned that like or i hadn't thought about it specifically but the resource management of it it also doesn't do the thing where it's like 
oh, I saved that stuff for no reason. Like you are <laughs> resource managing and making decisions and also missing out on things. Like it doesn't feel yes. like you can do everything, but it feels like you can almost <sighs> do everything where you're not like, uh, sorry, I, I more mean like you can eventually do everything, but the yeah, decisions yeah, yeah, yeah. you are making feel more grounded um, and you can still miss out on things. Um, so it's like, yeah, and there, there's still there heavy things. choices without being like, am I ever going to get back to that? But at least for and that there are even night, things like, where like, if you do them too fast, you kind of put a timer on how quickly you can do things. Yeah. Like if you do guess very light spoilers, like if you do the doctor route really fast and like focus on that and just chug it out, like, Hey, you're on a timer now. Cause you, you yeah. need stabilizer. <laughs> and I got uh, to a point where I had like two or three stabilizers and I was just like, oh, I'm good. I can do whatever I want now. And then like 10 turns later, you're like, oh God, I'm homeless and poor and please, please I, need, I need to feed this cat though. Cause maybe it'll lead to something. And then it you're doesn't just like, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't feed a cat. <laughs> uh but yeah i i really like that game a lot i think the old like i did that they've done dlc i think i think free because i don't think i mm -hmm. paid extra for it or anything um which was good but there was some stuff at, like i feel like they hit you with a big thing that's like at the beginning of the dlc that's like you need to do all this within like 12 or 10 cycles or something and i was still doing most of the other stuff so i'm just like nah I'm not going to do that. <laughs> okay. And I don't feel like it really punished me at all, but I'll have to look and, and actually see if I missed out on a bunch of stuff because of that. But like, it felt like the DLC just kind of carried on and I was still successful in the long run. So maybe it didn't matter, but they wanted you to do a lot. And I was like, you only like eight scrap parts. And like, <laughs> I didn't go negotiate with, with all these people. Like, I'm like, now I'm fi fixing the ship. I got two days to finish <laughs> it. <laughs> the guy's looking for his daughter. <laughs> oh lemon mina oh my god lemon oh. mina i did that Great. too fast <laughs> did, did they, theirs was the first ending i got <laughs> oh, so good they're great great game absolutely go check great that game. out y'all uh i did play it a little bit on steam deck i don't recommend playing that game on steam deck uh play that on tiny PC or... yeah just like the text not great <laughs> the text <laughs> I text. Know. The, 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 little the like deck. text in the boxes is fine, but some of the text on the map and stuff gets really weird and symbols mm. get really weird on the Steam Deck. Mm -hmm. It's playable, but it, like I would play that on a actual like TV or, or PC if you want to. that sequel, right? Just recently. Yeah. Yep. It's two coming up. I don't know when, but coming soon. Uh and the other game, well one of the other <laughs> one of the other games I played was I played Humanity. Uh, have either of you really seen humanity? Yes, yeah, Lemmings, right? Kind of. It's definitely like feels like the base was Lemmings, but they went places with it. Like by the end, I was like, oh, this is not Lemmings anymore. Like this is this is a oh, real okay. puzzle game. Um, so it, yeah, it, it is a bit Lemmings like, especially at the beginning. But it, there becomes a point where like your little humans that you're leading around like Lemmings at different times have like weapons and there's other puzzles and stuff involved there's a other group of like enemy human at lemmings called the others that also have weapons mm. and stuff what? at points there's yeah there's there's points where like they kind of just ditch the whole base of the game too which is interesting where like most of wow. it's like hey you go around on this map you set points for people to turn and branch and do certain things and jump and all that stuff and then at one point they're like hey Here's a follow command. You just run up to some people and tell them to follow you and you can run them all over the map. And I was like, what? <laughs> oh. <laughs> so like it really turns itself on its head a ton. Um, I had a pretty darn good time with this game. I will say it has one of, if not the worst soundtracks I've ever heard in a video game. <laughs> I have never wanted to not want to music, mute the music in a video game. I wanted to mute the music in this video game. <laughs> like, what's, the, what's the style of the music? 
the genre. Trash. Like <laughs> loosely electronic, but it was just noise. Like it's just noise oh. and lots of beeps and boops and I would love for it to come out that was on purpose. Like they made an awful soundtrack. Like it's be- there's a couple songs. <laughs> there's a couple songs that are like okay and at one point they give you the power to change the song that's playing and i was just like go to go to go to the two that are okay whichever one comes (laughs) up first go to the two that that i can stand listening to uh so i use that a lot but like as a puzzle game like really good puzzles uh i went through and did like the whole game finished everything got the platinum trophy on playstation for it uh and i think out of the base puzzles there was like two that I was super confused on and did look up and they have solution videos on how to do the base puzzles in the game too. Um, so you can like, if you're super lost, you can just look at a solution video. And there were a couple where I was like, Oh, that's a weird mechanic that they did not explain that. I just didn't figure out on my own. And then it's like, okay, cool. Out of that, I watched that solution video. I get how it works. I can use it later. Um, so other than like a couple instances where that happens, most of the base puzzles easy to understand like what they're trying to get or I shouldn't say easy, but like the correct amount of difficulty. Uh, and then they have like a bunch of these optional people you can pick up on each map, basically called goldies. They're just golden people. Uh, <laughs> but you can get all like getting each one on each map is like a thing. You need to get a certain number to continue mm. in the game, but getting all of them is, is like achievement stuff. And there are a few of those where I'm, I did a hundred percent look up a guide of like, yo, what the fuck is going on with this? Oh, <laughs> uh, but I could have absolutely finished the game to its entirety without doing that. So it didn't feel bad. Um, so just great puzzle game. If you're interested in puzzle games, Grab some headphones with different music playing and play. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then another one I played was a space for the unbound. This was like an indie kind of point and click adventure game uh, out of a studio from Indonesia, which was really cool. So it's like high school boy and girl uh just doing like high school boy and girl things but there's a bunch of supernatural shit going on uh lots of like you know are we in a dream like what's real what's reality what's Mm -hmm. fake uh type of stuff going on pretty good enjoyed it It, i didn't love it but i did enjoy it a lot and it was kind of cool to just have a game that takes place in a place that i'm not familiar with like it's based the game takes place in indonesia uh so there's like lots of cool culture bits and stuff in there and they have like some quizzes and info just about like indonesia hidden in there like festivals and things and i was like oh this is cool just like learning about a culture that's not really represented in games or movies or anything anywhere so that that part was cool uh and i also played i'm gonna say this name wrong it's french dordon i think i think that's right sure they say it only like twice in the whole game so i was kind of surprised by that because the game the whole game takes place by the Dordon River. <laughs> Don't uh, know. But it's it's a cute little indie game with like watercolor environments and stuff like that. And it's a it's definitely a narrative game. Think kind of a life is strange style where really all you're doing is walking around doing a couple things that are like pre-scripted and things. It's it's you're there to play a story. Basically you're, you're playing a book uh, and you're playing as a woman whose grandmother passed away and her grandmother like left uh, something for you to pick up from her house. And it's a grandmother you haven't seen in like 10, 15, 20 years, something like that. So you go back and it turns out that the main character has had amnesia since they went to their grandmother's house right before that last time uh so Mm -hmm. it's a whole thing about that last summer before you lost your memories which sounds really cool and it was really cool and there were some cool like family squabbles and things going on that didn't really get investigated so that was kind of a big letdown um it was one of those ones where it had a ton of promise and it was kind of mid but like Mm. watercolor art style very cool super cool art style recommend pulling up a trailer uh, if you're interested in some of that stuff uh super cool art style story was like it's only like a four hour game probably 
And I think for probably two and a half hours, maybe three, I was like, yeah, this is interesting. And then like one, the extra hour, I was like, oh, okay, well, that's fine, I guess. <laughs> 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 they, they just left a lot of things not really answered. I'm just like this lady's mom, da- mom and dad w- were like fighting for the past 20 years. And you're just kind of like, yeah, no. We hate you. Hate, I hate my mom. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> that's, we're just not going to really dive into that. All right, cool. <laughs> uh, yeah. But it was a fun game. It's on, it's on a uh, game pass. That's why I played it too. It's a good game pass game. Nice. Um, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that's on game pass. I think I installed it when I did a recent like game pass install, uh, just running through everything. So I'll check it out, but kind of don't want to now that you talked about it. <laughs> so I'll leave it. Um, sorry, there was an itch game that you made me think of that was apparently popular, but I wanted to talk about it, but I, for the life of me, can't find the link to it, so I'll bring it up next week. Um, it's time for the news, which means I get to play the news theme. It's time for the news, everybody. News this week, the Nintendo Direct has directly impacted my eyeballs. In my wallet. Uh, Tuesday? Was Tuesday? Wednesday? Wednesday. Uh, Tuesday. (laughs) Wednesday. I think it was yesterday. It was yesterday, right? I think it was Wednesday. Yeah, I was watching at home. It was Wednesday. Or is it May 1996? Because Super Mario (laughs) RPG is coming back folks the remake rumored remake recently rumored remake uh of the snes rpg legend of the seven stars i believe is what it is called um 75 dollars in uh, 1996 what you say the original one was legend of the seven stars yeah (laughs) yeah the remake uh I don't know what he's laughing at. I heard, didn't hear it. I don't know. I laughing. just imagine if it was Legend of the Seven Sars. <laughs> Anyways, they're remaking that. Uh, it's funny. on November 17th. Um, also with that, that looked interesting, is the Detective Pikachu 2. They showed off some gameplay uh, where Grumpy Pikachu grumped around a little bit. And I thought to myself, what is happening? I don't. I don't want this, a second. It's a game. game for kids. Don't worry about it. A, it's not for I us. A, I want a second movie because that movie was solid. I Better than I thought it, it would though. be. It looks pretty fun. I just didn't know what was happening. The game looked rough. Oh yeah, graphically. Just yeah. I yeah. was like, huh. yeah. I, I'll huh. agree with that. <laughs> um. That no one cares about. That no one cares about. WarioWare new WarioWare game look micro games look like fun. Pikmin four Man, details. I freaking hate WarioWare. HD versions of Pikmin one and two. I somehow missed it. Uh, don't worry though, because I already bought them. It was a, it was like a ten second announcement at the end. Yeah. They were doing a it lot was. of that. They were like, oh by the way, if you can't wait for Pikmin four, you can play Pikmin one and two and technically yeah. three right now. I have three. Um, for the Wii U on my Steam Deck, and I think I might own the Switch version as well. So uh, I also haven't played that. I haven't played any Pikmin. I played Tinykin, which is one of the best games that's ever. Been oh, made. I also played Tinykin recently um, too. It was a good game. Yeah, fantastic. It was my number mm-hmm. one last year, I think. Oh, I wouldn't put it that high, but it was good. It was my number one just because <laughs> I fell in love with it so hard, and I had its base. So would you say that you rated it subject? <laughs> No, I objectively it was, gave it a good It was love like and, number five or number six in our top ten list. It was great. It's it just the music in that game. It's opposite it's of solid. humanity. It's it's very similar to Battle Bit, but it has a lot fewer flaws. No issues. Yeah, I was gonna it's say just, ah! yeah. It's in a space where there has not been that, and it's just like boom, fucking solid. And I got every 3D platformer with followers, boom, and it was like holy shit. Um, yeah, true. alongside the uh, Mario remaster, they also mentioned they're working on a Princess Peach game. 
uh, something about oh, being yeah. her being center stage. And they're also doing a remaster of the 3DS uh, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, which I believe is Luigi's Mansion 2, correct. technically. Um, That's correct. So they're making that. Uh, and then... Um, Vampire Survivors coming. Vampire Survivors coming to Switch. <laughs> Batman Arkham Trilogy is coming to Switch. Dude, I laughed when that came <laughs> and, up. I was and, just like, what? <laughs> And I wrote, I wrote in my chat for work. I wrote, I feel bad for the person who has to, who is playing Batman Arkham <laughs> Asylum for the first time on a Nintendo Switch. And one of my coworkers said, "That would be me." And I wrote, "Godspeed." <laughs> I like, I I hear you, but at the same time, I recently tried playing Arkham Knight again on a Series X, and it still doesn't run that great. So. Like oh, it's not on a switch. <laughs> yeah, like it's it's gonna run on a switch, but I think the crazy thing is that people are gonna be like, it's only like 20-ish and it doesn't look that good on switch and it's got hitch problems. And I'm like, no, 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 that's not the switch. That's the fucking game because it runs like that <laughs> I mean, everywhere. Arkham Asylum runs great still. Yes. So those ran fine. Yeah. I think I think those will run fine on Switch. But yeah, Night, they look I think is gonna have some they issues. They look like 480p, but it it'll, it'll yeah, be fine. It'd probably be 720. <laughs> Um, I know nothing about it, but that Star Ocean in the Octopath Traveler HD 2D. Oh, I'm excited for looked that. looked cool. Um, Star Ocean, <laughs> like, I'm a Tales of guy. Star Ocean really? has been on my... Yes, yes, Will. You, I'm a big Tales of guy. I you do, but I, I haven't played a Star Ocean game, so, like, this this will probably be my first one when it comes out. Uh, this it looks is the one that had, like like action combat and like a shitload of numbers popping off right yes and that that give me numbers <laughs> you got numbers <laughs> popping that'll off, that'll like, do it for you fuck yeah pop a numbers fuck yeah i'll do uh, that i'll do that yeah i um i'm i'm close to playing another jrpg i mean i didn't finish chrono trigger but how can you truly finish chrono trigger you can. Uh, there's, there's, there's one that came out today. One. Uh, what? What? What came out? Today? Final Fantasy 16. Oh no, that's not a JRPG. Oh. No, yeah. it is. But I don't... it is. I mean, it's not. It's a modern. It is. No, it is. It's just not a turn-based JRPG. No, it's not. Yeah. A okay. <laughs> so, so you're gonna play Star Ocean, which is also an action JRPG. <laughs> no, I think I might play Final Fantasy VII finally. Um, oh, the original. Yeah, solid. The JRPG. <laughs> Shut up. <bro. laughs> <laughs> this bit's great. Um, they also um, they showed off that Myth Forced game again, which I think it's from. I believe it's from EA, which is a sad thing, but I think it looked really cool is only it? because I love uh I thought it was. I thought they said EA. I thought it was an indie. I think it's being published by EA. Something like that. Oh, it's an Aspire game. Yeah. So I, I'm a big sucker for like 80s cart Funimation cartoons. Uh, so that looks yeah. really great. Um, I don't see EA in this trailer. It doesn't oh, mean it's not, but no, they said some company, and I, I it might have been Aspire that I thought, oh, it's them. Um, I forgot to mention this, but I did play that demo for the Jump Light Odyssey game, and that oh. whole intro, while extremely and possibly legally actionable spaceship battleship Yamato, um, yeah, yeah. was very well <laughs> done and very cool. Um, they just changed a couple letters. Yeah, uh, when they originally was. showed that game, I forget what showcase or whatever it was the first time, I was like, oh, Space Battleship. Oh, legally distinct like, Space yeah. Battleship. I was like, you could have done the ships or you could have done the story. You did both and you're still somehow getting away with it. I don't <laughs> understand yeah. it. Um, Splatoon Splatfest, we don't care about. Uh, what else do we care about? We care about. Oh, that Headbangers uh, Pigeon game looked really funny and stupid. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you're just dumb. playing a pigeon rhythm game. Uh, I was kind of. Yeah. It's, it's a. It's a. Isn't it a battle royale? It, yeah, and a battle game? royale. Yeah. But it, it also had I, I uh, mini games in it as well. Yeah, like it's a mini I, I appreciate battle royale. It's Fall Guys, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I appreciate except the originality there. 
it looks dumb and bad, but I would play it if it were free. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's a good this extra is... life game, I think. That would be oh, pretty good extra life stupid. Game, right? I was like, the article ended and I was like, they're missing something. It's at the top. Uh, and at the end of the show, they did <laughs> announce a brand new, for the first time in t- 11 years, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, a brand new 2D Mario game was revealed, the last one being Super Mario Bros. Wii U in 2012, and then Super Luigi in 2013, if you count that, but we don't count that here, because Luigi is a loser. Um, What did you guys think about this trailer? (sighs) I'm on the fence. Go ahead, Ian. I I was just going to say, it's it's got some interesting stuff going on, but um, it You know, I'm just going to rip the mandate off. I'm going to say this. This looked like a concept for a possible video game. It didn't look like a video game to me, you know, and I know that's probably not true. This is probably gameplay, etc. But it just didn't feel like something where I'm like, oh, I can pick this up and it's going to feel and play like a real movie. It just looked like a really good fake video game. And so I, I don't know. I don't know. Cool stuff going on, but I wasn't crazy about the look of it for some reason. Yeah, I, the like art and animation for the characters was weird to me. Yeah, and yeah. just a general thing I hate about side scrollers when they do that weird view where the characters like tilted towards you three quarters. So like they're running forward, but it's yeah. like they're running towards me. Kind of just throws me off. Like it's it's like uncanny yeah. valley a bit for me, but. Like I, th- I thought the animations and stuff were a little clunky is not the right word, but it felt slow. Like the, yeah. the trailer yeah. felt like Mario and some of the stuff going on was just I felt stuck like motion a little bit. <sighs> yeah, it, it just, feels it just like... felt it felt slow is, is really it. You remember that era of Wii U games where it felt like the game was a bit too zoomed in? And I don't know why, either because they're like aiming for a lower resolution or because they're like people may play this on the tablet. And so everything felt a little bit too big and a little bit too zoomed in. That's what this kind of reminds me of when I look at it. It looks a lot like 2D land where it's a bit too cartoony, a bit too zoomed in. It, I mean, I felt like they had a lot of zoomed in shots on the trailer. Yeah. Like it, they were definitely doing a lot of zoom shots. The art sound know, kind of reminds me of that. Uh, the UI, the UI is not zoomed in at all. <laughs> yeah, tiny. That's the weird thing. Um, yes. The art direction reminds me slightly of that famous, the first Nintendo Power cover, the like claymation. Uh, oh yeah, but it, it, like feels like a more refined version of that, and like that, like you were saying, that quarter turn. Um, I will say, I, I'm. As far as new Mario, I'm firmly in the camp of 3D. Like, I would love another Odyssey or a Galaxy or something like that. I love... I mean, Super Mario World is one of my favorite games of all time. But I'll just go play that again, or I'll play Mario Maker levels if I need, like, a 2D Mario fix. I don't even play, like, Super Mario Bros. Or, like, I'll play 3 occasionally, but... That was was the thing that surprised me, because Super Mario World is a hybrid. It's a 2D, 3D. Well, I, I would say 3D, 2D, if that makes sense. Super and Mario World? Yeah. No, sorry, sorry. Uh, Super Mario... You mean 3D like 3D World? Land? 3D, 3D Super Mario World. Oh, okay. Yeah, what, what was your full name on that? 3D World. 3D World, yeah. yeah. Um, that's, that's a 3D, 2D, and I thought that's yeah. what they were going to go with, as in Same. you have a 3D in odyssey and you have 3d world is your is your new quote-unquote 2d so it's interesting to see them go back to the full 2d style and i think i'm not a fan of the 2d nothing against it it's just not for me but if i did have to play one i would prefer the 3d 2d of 3d world and yeah. so i don't i don't know that there's a space for a 2d especially when you've got super mario maker and super mario maker 2 which granted are are kind of dead now but that's a superior 2d version of mario to this because you've got the customization the community and all that shit well, on I top think, of it i think that's one of the things that throws a lot of people off and in like i don't think the mario maker games tend to sell as well as the other 2d mario games 
mm-hmm. because I think there's that pressure of like, oh, if you get this, you have to like create things, which I totally get because yeah. like I didn't buy them because I'm like, I don't want to create levels and stuff. And I'm, I get that's the focus of this game. Mm-hmm. So like, whereas these games don't, they don't come with that. So it, there's no, it's just like, hey, this is a 2D yeah. Mario. This is literally just for you to enjoy, have fun with. So like, I'm it excited about it, but I'm, yeah, I'm not as excited as I should be for a 2D Mario because like, yeah, I think they're 3D passed up 2D a long time ago, and I don't think their yeah. 2D titles have been great for they've been good, like not saying they've been bad, but I don't think they've been like great for a long time. Yeah, and, yeah. but I to your point, 2D it should back, be, but yeah, sorry, it, but it should be both now. It should be Super Mario Brothers Wonder. And it also has the complete build, share, play features of Super Mario Maker, but mm. in Super Mario Brothers Wonder. It should be fucking both now. It should be, here's our tailored campaign, and here's a whole bunch of creation and community mode as well. It should I be don't both. think, I just don't think they want to muck up the marketing on that. I, that's understandable, but it would be a much better game. if. Or it was when this comes out, add Wonder to Mario Maker 2. They won't, um, but it would be cool. They won't, yeah. but like, <laughs> that's the other route. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I would have preferred Mario Odyssey too. Um, I'm kind of shocked we haven't heard what that group is working on officially. I'm guessing, yeah, because which two? Well, there was that. Game? There was a complete, completely unconfirmed rumor. I can't even remember where it came from. Where it was, it was Voyage, which is. Super Mario Voyage, which is the sequel to Odyssey. So, oh, there's again, a different rumor, rumor that the team that made Odyssey is working on a Donkey Kong game too. So, Ooh, 3D Donkey Kong. Yeah, that that was the other yeah. rumor that I had heard. But it's Donkey been, Kong's you know, 64 Odyssey. Too. Odyssey came out the same year as Te- er, Breath of the Wild, and Tears of the Kingdom has been sitting yeah. on optimization shelves for a year, and we still didn't get a new 3D Mario. So. Yeah, I'm assuming next year Switch 2 launch title is the new 3D Mario or Donkey Kong or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Super Mario oh, we, RPG, I think, is what I'm looking for. One thing I care about, though. Well, oh, um, did I? I apologize. What do you care about? Uh, Persona 5 Tactica. I like me some tactics games. Persona 5 Royal. I didn't play the base one, so I can't super comment on it, but like. Persona 5 Royal, absolutely incredible game that was also incredibly long. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm excited for a tactics game. It looks very much in the XCOM Mario plus Rabbid style, and it looks like they do some cool stuff tying it into the actual mechanics from the original game. So I'm, I'm excited. But, but chibi. But chibi. Hey, remember we were talking about subjective activity around like art styles and stuff at the beginning of this episode yeah still chibi man fuck chibi it's fine i I feel like i would would prefer it if it weren't chibi but like it's fine with it chibi yeah chibi was okay before funko pops existed i wouldn't go that far no i wouldn't even give it that i wouldn't give it that no chibi I, I, i still didn't like chibi but i think funko pops made them worse in my mind because now That's I fair. associate it with fair. that. And well, these Funko don't Pops. even look. These don't even look like Funko Pops because they got like. Yeah, they're not that chibi long limbs. They got features. <laughs> they're yeah. they're like weird because they like usually chibi's big head, small limbs, and this is like well, they're like chibi, but also the heads are not that big, and the What's that? arms and legs are super long. I gotta look this up. I joined. This is uh, a while ago. Uh, I joined a cult. Uh, we we have sex on Tuesdays. <laughs> Uh, no, cult. it was um, oh, f- uh, fuck Allegra art on Reddit, and it's all <laughs> for people who hate uh, it's Alleg Allegri Allegri art. Sorry, Allegri art. It's the art style, modern art style, where like the people have like big hands, like big arms and stuff. And, oh, like it's always oh. used in like After Effects animation reels for like your bank. Or stuff, and they have like yeah. the small heads and the huge arms and bodies and everything. Yeah. And it's just people posting examples of that and just how much they hate it. And I just sat there and I went, I do hate this. It's awful. It's like it's like um, American chibi. <laughs> yeah, it's like no, it's like fancy chibi. It's, it's like chibi. Uh, rich. Chi- yeah. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. If I could have a callback real quick, I forgot to mention the weirdest, the weirdest 
possibly best part of the new Avatar movie is that <laughs> is that the whole movie is about Jake Sully and his family now. And it turns out he's just kind of like an asshole American father. And it's very weird, oh, no. but he's like a military dad. Like there's this, there's this scene where he's like obnoxiously lecturing. He's a kid and he's just like, how'd you do that? You get your brother. Do you understand me? And he's just like, and the kid's like Lima Charlie. And you're just like, what? And he goes, oh, he means loud and clear in military tango. Like he's taught his children fucking military tango, but, but his, <sighs> his children are so fucking terrified of him that there's a situation where the kid's in trouble and he's on the radio and he's like, he's like, dad, I mean, uh, devil dog, come in. And it's just like, <laughs> like, <Devil dog. laughs> like, holy shit. He's raised an American family in this alien race, alien planet. And he's also like abusive American dad about it. And it's like fucking I did not expect that aspect of the movie. It's bonkers. Does he? He has his legs in this one. He's full. He's full gone blue now. Like, like at the end of the first one, remember he gets transferred, so he's not even an avatar anymore. He's just full blue boy. But uh, apparently they have four fingers, and that's how people can tell they're they're weird. So oh, that's how they can tell. Not, oh, Does the, he the fake ones. <laughs> Does he what? Are there any leg jokes? Let's, let's end the Why are you focused on this one? <laughs> no, I just feel like there should be a callback to it. I feel like that that's the type of movie where they're like, let's call back to when he didn't have legs. I was hoping for you to be like, you know, they did make a stupid leg joke. Anyway. Yeah, they put him in a wheelchair for this whole like 20 minute segment. <laughs> <laughs> a week in the Bernie's. Like, PTSD the whole time. <laughs> Sully stick together. He's just like a weird <laughs> fucking. It's to the point where he was like so militant asshole that that Maggie was like, "Is this what it was like growing up for you?" Because both my parents were in the Marine Corps, and I was like, "No, it was not <laughs> like this. Like we were not a hardcore military family like this. It was. It's a. It's kind Did of a weird like, aspect of the movie. Make Pandora great again. Signs. <laughs> stand up for your plan honestly <laughs> like he would be a trump supporter like Unobtainium it's fucking, this ass <laughs> i did not expect them to take like the main character from the first movie who like literally turns his back on the human species to join this other people and in the second movie he becomes like like a hardcore military american abusive dad and it's like <laughs> what the fuck it's it's funny anyways don't swim on me um <laughs> Uh, there's that some of that Microsoft uh, ABK stuff, but we can talk about that next week. Um, I would prefer that. It's more clear. Yes, <laughs> also the reason why we're going to talk about it next week. Yeah. Um, Just getting lots of good tidbits. We'll we'll do a, a, a we'll recap do a breakdown. next week. Uh, and then wishlist spotlight, folks. Wishlist spotlight section where we highlight games that you should go wishlist on Steam because wishlisting matters and it pushes them up in the algorithm yes, yes. and gives them all sorts of goodies. This game is called No Sun to Worship. It piqued my interest because someone said, simply posted the link in the Slack, in my work Slack and wrote Splinter Cell. Um, so this is a minimalist experimental Ooh. stealth action story that explores the darkest sides of humanity. We painted the sky ash and gray, burned the heavens to starve each other. Now we talk an endless cemetery of regret. Um, there's a great trailer here as well as screenshots. It's like a weird, like, like diesel punk almost. Oh yeah, um, that's a good one. Like spy game. This guy's got a sick ass helmet. It looks like a real HD version of like um, the guy Python. from Metal Gear Solid, the ninja, cyber ninja. God, why can't I think of his name? Raiden. Gray Fox? Yeah, Gray Fox. He sort of reminds me of like a Gray Fox, and it sort of looks like a PlayStation 1 game, but like super high res and some good textures. Um, yeah, well, currently uh, coming soon. Cool. So go wishlist that. I'll put it in the description. Oh, yeah, these definitely are some PS1 textures, but higher res. Yeah, 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 yeah. And a bunch of this story like really grabbed me because it's very like the world has gone quiet when they arrived. And so... Uh, this is kind of creepy. And plus, who I feel like games haven't focused on stealth for a while. Like a lot of games just have mm -hmm. stealth in it. And to like yeah. see a game that's focused on it where I know like things will work and bug tested for it for it um, would be uh, super fun to play. So go check out No Sun to Worship. Last, one, last like true stealth game I played, I think, was probably MGS5. <laughs> that was like seven yeah. years ago, eight years ago, something like that. 
2014. 2015. 2015. 2015. Yeah. Wow. Uh, also, go check out. There's a ton of demos. Steam Next Fest is going on. So like. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. I need yeah, to check go out check out Steam Next Fest. Now. There's a ton of demos uh, on Save Data. We played the Invincible on Monday. Will you were there? Oh yeah, that was for that Steam Next Fest. Fun. Steam Next Fest. Uh, go check that game out. Perfect demo, and I downloaded the book, and I think I'm going to read the book before I play the game. I mean, uh, that sounds right because it looks really good. Uh, and then. Um, the the folks also played Lil Guardsman on stream for Save Data today, Ooh. which is basically Papers Please, but a comedy. And the writing is very on point. Highly recommend checking it out. Short demo, like maybe an hour or less than. Um very funny, very good comedy. Give that a wish list too. Yeah. I, I'm gonna go download a bunch of demos after this. Uh because I like video games. Folks. That's going to do it for us here in the studio live from the internet. It has been Local Chat with your host, Will Crosby. Joining me this week was the lovely David from the Save Data team, as well as one Ian Gibson, now wanted in the country of Pandora. Spain. Pandora. That's or a peeing planet. in the water. <laughs> Peed in the water. Do they all pee in the water? Whoa. I think so. That's some probably. salty water. Have you been um, to a pool in the United States? We do too. Drink. Uh, folks, we'll be back uh, this weekend with a special fun stream. I don't know when it is, so keep your eyes peeled to the Twitter and the announcements channel. And then Tuesday, your boy, Will, is going to be playing some Pikmin 1. So come check that out as I brave the strange new worlds of plant life, plant-like life. Uh, until then, see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.